Welcome back. With a mission to provide a space for creative expression, the organization Bronx Film Initiative offers opportunities for young aspiring filmmakers. Let's Make a Movie is just one of the many programs this organization offers to bridge the gap between the dreamers and the doers. Joining me to discuss the BFI is the director and the founder of the organization, Christina Richardson. Christina, thank you so much Hi. for joining me. Thank now, you can me. you just tell me a little bit more about the organization Bronx Film Initiative? Yes, so I founded the Bronx Film Initiative in 2017 in an effort to, again, bridge the gap between dreamers and doers. Um, as a filmmaker that grew up in a historically marginalized neighborhood, I didn't have a lot of access to the world of like filmmaking and storytelling and directing, but I always had a passion for it since I was eight years old. Um, and I was born in California. So, you know, I was acting and there was Hollywood right there. But when my family migrated to New York, I didn't really see a pathway into the industry like I did when I was in California. Uh, so I decided to create one. <laughs> Now, I, I love that, you know, the term the dreamers and the doers, because I, I think that when we think about, you know, becoming an artist, becoming an actress or a filmmaker, for so many people, it is a dream, yeah. um, but we don't often have the opportunity to actually pursue that. So, you know, I think it's amazing. Now, what I really love is that, you know, there are several programs that are aimed towards teens and young adults. Why did you want to focus on this age group? Well, for me, it was because I knew what I wanted at that early age. I, I think I was born to be a creative. I was always, I've always been a storyteller. So I wanted to focus on that group because when you are exposed early enough, it can kind of determine where you decide to take your life. And if you are made aware of career opportunities and just the possibilities of being able to work in that space, I think it's great to catch students at that age where they're having to make those decisions about college and about what they, you know, are deciding to focus on. So I thought that, you know, middle school and high school was like the perfect age to target. Now, there was a concentrated effort to bridge the gap for kids in low income neighborhoods. Can you just talk about the challenges, you know, that arise when you have big dreams, but you come from a community that has very limited resources? Yes. Um, I think the, the fact that being in a historically marginalized community, oftentimes the difference between you actually achieving those goals and those dreams that you have is just proximity. And you don't have access to certain resources, certain training, and just knowledge of the film and television industry. It can seem like such a far in the distance um, a thing to do. So I thought it was important to target those neighborhoods because that's where a lot of creativity and the culture comes from. It comes from, you know, marginalized people. It comes from black creatives and black and brown people. I just wanted to be able to, that I wanted to make sure that I provided resources to our community so that they can have the same chances as someone else who may have have more opportunities presented to them at an early age. Now, this kind of leads to my next question. Um, and it, it, I guess it's kind of like thinking about the future, but, you know, <laughs> how can opening these doors for, you know, underserved youth change how we see the film industry today? Like, you know, I guess, you know, what are some of your hopes for that? Or, you know, just, you know, as a yes. fact, like what could be different? I think the number one thing is representation. We always talk about representation and getting more stories out there. However, we don't necessarily have that bridge to reach back into those communities where these stories are being created. So if we can reach out to, to the young people and to get them trained early and get them the resources that they need to take a part in storytelling and have their voices heard in a way that people will pay attention. You know what I mean? I think that's really important. I think we'll change the face of the industry. I think eventually this will lead to more representation. It'll lead to... Uh, more diversity in storytelling. And honestly, people in these communities will be able to see themselves on television if we get them access at an earlier age. And I also want to add that I think, you know, when people often hear the term representation, they think like in front of the camera, but it's so impactful, you know, who's behind the camera as yes. well. And I know there's always been controversy or a lot of opinion about who's telling our stories. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, what are your thoughts on that? I'll just, you know, having somebody from your community tell your story. Yes. Well, I think, you know, I always I have this quote that I say, you know, 
it's about the lion and the hunter, right? If nobody is telling the story of the lion, the hunter will always be glorified. And it's kind of the same thing for us. It's like, we need an opportunity to tell our own stories because then that's where the, the authenticity will come in because we will be the ones giving our own personal experiences. It's never gonna be the same when you have another culture attempting to tell the story of, a, of another culture. <clears throat> it's always a better thing for us to tell our own stories. Now, one of the programs you offer is Let's Make a Movie. It sounds so fun, so I just love the title already. You know, what inspired the creation of this program? Oh, man. So for me, um, I know a lot of students or a lot of young people in these communities, we face a lot of challenges in life. It's just, you know, it's just how it is, you know, coming from the hood or, you know, whatever you want to right. call it. Um, we face a lot of challenges. And the process of filmmaking is extremely therapeutic. So in my mind, we take a holistic approach to our programming. So we focus on the process of creating, not only just the fact that you're able to create and you're able to learn about different career opportunities, but you're able to go through that process with your peers from script to screen and you're able to see it through and then you're able to see a final product um, and celebrate your, your work and your dedication to something. You know, and I think having that sense of ownership over an idea and seeing something through to completion, it also, it really will change a student, you know, to be able to say, wow, I really did that. I was a part of that. We had so many obstacles and we didn't give up right. because as you know, filmmaking is problem solving. And if you can make it through the filmmaking process with your peers, working with industry professionals, you get to that big screen, there's nothing like it. And that's the part that makes our program different. Now, what are some areas of filmmaking participants can explore? Because I know it's like a huge, a huge, you know, just mm -hmm. field. So what are some yes. of the areas they get to explore? <clears throat> we literally explore all of them from the, the conception to screenwriting to storyboarding, shot listing, cinematography, set design, um, production coordinating, okay, actual, the actual production, sound, gaffers, um, the whole G&E department, hair and makeup, we, we go through the entire process with them. Like it's not just point and shoot, it's mm -hmm. we bring in an entire production and we place students within that production wherever they feel like they want to participate and they have to contribute to the production in that capacity from beginning to end. Now, the goal of the program is to make a short film, and this is a massive accomplishment for even experienced filmmakers, mm -hmm. people who are seasoned in the industry. So, you know, what do you hope the kids learn from this experience? Well, our program, because we work, um, a lot of our program, we work within the New York City Department of Education because we are vendors for the DOE. Mm -hmm. um, we tie in social emotional learning with our programming. So students are getting that holistic uh, care that they need as far as just their emotional development, but they walk away with so much. They walk away feeling accomplished and full. They walk away with better communication skills, uh, creative and critical thinking skills, just being able to present your ideas in front of a group and hearing no. You know, I think that's a valuable skill to say, you know what, I thought of an idea, my peers didn't like it, let me come back with another one. You know, yeah. like facing fears, public speaking, it, there's so many different transferable skills that they learn from this. So when they walk away from the program, they literally, you know, are just an improved individual. I, I think <laughs> that's so amazing, though, because I, I think a lot of times when we work with kids, people are afraid to say no to them or, mm -hmm. or you know, they try to make it nice so like everybody everybody's ideas, you know, uh, going to make it. But I think it's so important that it's like, you know, in this industry, sometimes it's tough and you you are going to hear somebody yeah. say, you know what, maybe that's not the best idea. So I think that's amazing mm -hmm. that you guys are kind of like prepping them in a safe space to yes. kind of hear that. So I yes. love that. I also just want to add to that. I think that this is probably happening in an exciting time because I think with social media, we see that a lot of these kids have these yeah. really cool ideas. And I think some of them are already like kind of making like little movies, you mm -hmm. know, um, on TikTok and other social media platforms. So, you know, how has that, you know, influenced some of the work that you do, just the use of social media with young children? Yes. So actually we, uh, it's so funny that you mentioned social media because yes, because of convergence and media has changed and students are making, it's easier to make things now, we still want them to have a leg up. We still want them to have right. that experience of creating things at a, at a higher level and a higher production value. So our program exposes them to that. And we, we did a project where um, we took the skits from the Lauren Hill 
album, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, mm -hmm. and recreated the skit in a classroom setting. And the kids thought of it as a TikTok. So I'm able to kind of tie in what they're familiar with, with the process of actual video production. So I utilize it because it's, you know, it's bridging the gap from them to actual this business. Now, can we talk a little bit about the event at Lincoln Center? I think that's like kind of huge. So yes. can you just talk a little bit about that? So we actually had our premiere last year at the Lincoln Square AMC Theater, right by Lincoln Center. And it was a huge turnout. This was one of our larger Let's Make a Movie programs where we spent a year making a film, developing it, writing it, shooting it, casting. Uh, we went through the entire process on a on a huge, huge scale. And um, yeah, we, we were able to show the film to their friends and family and people from the Department of Education and different celebrities came just to see their film. And I think it's important because I always want our projects to culminate in a screening or a red carpet because I want the students to feel celebrated. We want them to dress up and put on those suits and ties and we want them to walk the red carpet. We had paparazzi um, for them taking their photos, but they had an, a sense of just accomplishment. And it was such a tough journey to get to the finish line because right. filmmaking is such a tough sport <laughs> and I call it a sport. Um, <laughs> but they were able to see it through to the end and they were celebrated for it in the best in the best way. Now, I think that's just amazing. Can you quickly just let us know who is eligible to join? So we work with New York City Department of Education. Um, if you want to join or you're interested in, in becoming a part of the club, because once you go through our uh, program or one of our programs, you are now a part of a club of just networking opportunities and um, internships and all types of resources that we provide to students. We also look for college students. We have students from Fordham University that are film students that are looking to put their experience to use. Mm -hmm. So we bring them in to actually also work on our projects. And then we have seasoned industry professionals that also come in in order to mentor our college students and our high school and middle school students. So it's basically a win across the board for everyone involved because the best way to become a great filmmaker is to do it. Right. And by making these films and, and making several films throughout the year, you get that experience that you can put on your resume, but also it helps you find your voice as a creative. So it's just, if you're either, you can be a high school student or college or an industry professional looking to give back, looking to exercise that muscle, um, we want you. <laughs> well, Christina, thank you so much for joining me you're and talking welcome. about that. It sounds, I wish I had this, so thank you so <laughs> that's, much. That's my favorite thing when people say like, yeah. I wish I had this when I was a kid, because me too, right. so I made it. <laughs> now, if you or someone you know would like to sign up for any of the amazing programs Bronx Film Initiative offers, please go to their website at www.bronxfilm.com initiative.org and follow them on social media at Bronx Film Initiative. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more open right after this.